we should we should allow create only that particular region where uh, uh, the resource group belongs to that's not true even the resource group belongs to one region the resources inside the resource group can belong to a different region just keep that in mind okay okay good now next what we're going to discuss before going to uh, create networking everything we need to understand uh, the concept of uh, how exactly a data center is and then what is uh, how exactly it was been offered to you what is the region availability zone and everything so before directly going into the region right first you need to understand what exactly data center and what exactly inside data center is going is doing see right now if i go here if i go to virtual machines there is a virtual machine running the, the screen which you are seeing right now it is it is happening from the same machine see this is a windows vm 16 gb in the name which i gave it is having a public and private ip okay so it is running in east us region basically see east us now what exactly is happening at the back end that is most important point if you don't understand that it will always a scratch in your mind understand okay what what is happening now whenever you create a virtual machine by adding what is happening at the back end let's see that one for that what you need to understand is you need to understand you start from the data center actually uh, for example how exactly a data center looks like if i type uh, azure say data centers and if i go to image okay <clears throat> this is a data center guys okay so looking small right so don't don't get uh see, see here this is a big crane here okay and this is a truck here this is a big uh, uh concrete truck here see how small a truck is b before this one such a big one data center is now that means whenever you create a machine uh, machine in your azure or you are posting something in the facebook right so it is actually saving somewhere such a, such a big building actually okay so what's next so inside this data center what exactly you have okay let's go to that one now inside this big data center what you're going to have is imagine this is the data center it it, it spreads with hundreds of racks guys so i'll tell you what is a rack rack is something like a like almara right what we have in your home where you're going to put your clothes everything similar to that one it's a rack actually where you put your devices actually so what i'm going to say, imagine something like this sorry okay so imagine this is rack one rack two rack three rack one the reason is if you understand this one you easily understand what is happening at the back end guys simply if when i create a machine or a storage account what exactly is happening otherwise it will be always a confusion okay how exactly things are getting created that's why i'm actually teaching this one okay rack three so you have rack three rack one rack two rack three so how exactly this rack looks like okay we will go back to the same picture so this is the data center right inside the data center you will have uh let me show it to you what is a data center rack <clears throat> okay this is a data center rack guys okay these are the these are all the racks which you are able to see right these are all the racks so okay such a big one right these are all the racks so every data center can contains and you, are, you won't be working like this by the way okay it will be chilled so you'll be see you won't get wires and everything uh, because it won't work like that because the the way she is holding a laptop right you can't connect from here to server you need to go behind the rack have a cable and connect to that one it is just a for a photo session it, it is happening here at least it's my personal opinion but anyway i think cooling is coming from the top actually anyway so now this is a data center like this if you see these are all racks see all these things are racks actually this is how inside the 
data center looks like this is very sophisticated data center normally it won't be every data center won't be like it it, it will looks like a fish market normally all wires coming in all devices old devices are kept like that so this is very tidied up tidy up and uh, looks like a very professional data center normally it won't happen like this okay fine what exactly you contain inside a rack okay inside a rack what you will have is you will have physical devices say physical devices so what i'm going to say is something like physical servers i can say we have network devices as well but for the namesake i'll say i'll say physical server so every rack contains a lot of like uh, like at least 20 you can, at minimum of 20 you can have the physical servers actually let's imagine these are the physical servers so all the racks contain physical servers okay fine so now if i create a virtual machine from here if i create a virtual machine here is it directly create getting created in one of this physical server yes it is actually creating created in one of the physical server here yes i understand but that means that physical server don't have any other operating system this is where you need to understand comes the virtualization okay this is where the virtualization see the physical server cannot run a virtual machine until there is an operating system for example imagine you want to play a movie if you want to play a movie in your laptop if you buy a new laptop which is not having any sort of windows operating system or any operating system can you play that obviously not so you buy a laptop which which either should have operating system or you install the operating system drivers and everything and then you run the movie actually similarly physical server right it can't directly run a vm it needs to have operating system for example in order to for example like uh, well known well known virtualization platforms are uh, you have like uh, vmware <clears throat> vsphere and uh, we have microsoft hyper v hyper v <clears throat> and you have like uh, red hat kvm which actually provide this virtualization software. So when it comes to uh, Microsoft, right? Microsoft is actually using the hypervisor layer, <clears throat> which is, uh, I think, uh, Windows 2012 R2 Hyper-V. I'll, I'll explain what is this Hyper-V and everything. So it is running. So what I'm going to do is to make you more understandable on this one, I'm going to take a different picture actually here. I'm going to take a different picture so what you need to understand is imagine this is a physical server imagine this is a physical server what you are seeing here is a data center a rack inside rack you have physical server here i'm taking only physical server to explain you what is happening at the back end now this is a physical server now how exactly a physical server looks like in real so what you can do you can go back here I'll I'll say like a uh, uh, Dell R710. If I go to images, so this is this is how the server looks like basically. But uh, HP looks very cute, so let's put like HP DL380 G10. If I come down, yeah, let, this looks promising. So. Hmm, but it is less promising hold on guys let let me take a big, bigger picture for you okay this this is basically a physical server guys you have a lot you have a lot of hard drives here see these are all hard drives you have a very it, it, somewhere like it will be like 30 kgs or something so uh, i used to rack all this one in the data center so at the back end at the back or you'll say rare side you have all the all the ports and everything just uh, something like this let me show it to you So what I can do is I can go here tools size and the large size Come down Okay, this looks good Okay, this is how it looks like normally. So this is the front side This is actually called a bezel if you remove that one right you see all the the, the little greens are there they are actually drives running and At the back end you have ports like these are the Ethernet ports guys 
like a physical server looks like that means whenever you're creating a virtual machine or you're putting facebook post or linkedin uh, you're putting some video everything that that post actually saying saving at the back end somewhere some server like this actually remember that so this is how a physical server i'm not saying azure is going to use this physical server is going to hp or something i'm not saying that one because if the azure or aws start using hp dell servers say so hp and dell are not manufacturing anything they are actually buying all the parts from taiwan and china and they're assembling and do that one so the, the same thing can be done by by uh, aws and azure right they're going to have a contract with the intel saying that one okay send all the chips and everything there and they'll get uh, contracts with the different hardware vendors and buy it for cheap because they're going to buy like hundreds of servers at each time and they'll get a uh, manufactured there and send it out so they use custom servers they are not going to use hp and dell servers basically because it's become very very costly for them yeah so that is what a physical server is now as i said you can't really run a physical a vm on a physical server you need to have some sort of a os which which has a capability to run the vm so imagine if you install windows 7 right if you ask the windows 7 to run a virtual machine or windows 10 is there if you want the windows 10 to run a virtual machine it can't do that it has it has don't have that capability so what you need to do you need to install some sort of windows work uh, or vmware workstation or uh, you need to um, a virtual pc or uh, or oracle virtual box something and use it so but if you take microsoft uh, microsoft 2016 server 19 server 2012 r2 something like that right that operating system is capable of running the vms so what what we call it as we call such type of operating system as hypervisor okay so this is physical server inside that one what we're going to have is we're going to have a one more layer here which is actually called as a hypervisor so i say uh, windows <clears throat> windows in in uh, in microsoft uh, azure right it will be normally windows 2012 r2 is the hypervisor so inside that one you can have multiple virtual machines so what i'm trying to say is these are the virtual machines you can have now what exactly this hypervisor is doing i'll take a normally to explain about the virtualization right so i'll take analogy actually okay I'll take an analogy so the analogy is imagine physical server here what you are seeing right now is imagine it is a father actually okay the family right it's a father whereas hypervisor is mother whereas these are kids actually so these kids are for example imagine uh, uh, come on I'll say age three age 12 and and here i'm going to give age for example 18 or 20. so they have some three kids which is having age 3 12 and 20. now obviously the requirements of age 3 is different from age 12 or different from age 20 right so what will happen now what will happen is the father will go ahead and uh, get uh, work, work and get the salary and give it to mother mother knows very well which kid needs what right so the he needs a chocolate and he needs to give a chocolate and this guy requires a cycle or a geometry work something whatever it is the requirements mother is well aware of that one and accordingly whatever the amount salary was being given it will be shared accordingly based upon the requirements okay similarly here when it comes to physical server what exactly is happening is it, you are going to get shared with a physical resources such as cpu memory storage network okay other things normally network actually and what hypervisor will do it will take uh, it will take the cpu memory and allocate as required for example imagine this is a web server so in this it requires uh, 1 GB RAM for example or 1 CPU whereas this is an app server This requires for example 4 GB RAM Whereas this is a database server which is requires high performance DB and this is going to give 
somewhere like 16 GB RAM. So who are actually doing this type of allocation? It is done by the hypervisor. The responsibility will make sure that what mother will do if if father give like 10,000 salary. So for the for the expenses of home, what she will do? Or oh, every mother will do the same. She's try to save some money and try to adjust the whole whole home, all the resource, all the needs by 8,000 and try to save 2,000. Right. Similarly here what the hypervisor will do all the memory cpu will be given to hypervisor so and this it will going to distribute among the resources what exactly you're saying right somebody like vms is going to distribute that is the job of the hypervisor that means every if you go back to the picture every physical server in the rack and all the racks it will be installed with the hypervisor sometimes you can opt for having a physical server as well but 99 percent all the servers will be implemented with Microsoft in, in Azure. I'm telling in Azure Microsoft Windows 2012 Hyper-V. If you go to AWS, they are using hypervisor as a Zen server, Citrix Zen server modified actually. So this is what happening at the back end. OK, so in a data center, you will have this many racks, physical servers, hypervisor and and inside that one you have virtual machines. These are virtual machines guys. That means whatever I'm created this Windows 16 virtual machine, right? This is nothing but this orange box very simply said. Okay. Any questions here? Anything uh, related to rack or uh, or virtualization? Any doubt for you? Guys. Uh, Sri, I have one doubt. So you said on 2008, uh, the older version of uh, Azure was there. So 2008, uh, did that uh, version? Uh, no, 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 sorry, no. 18, 18, 18, 18. 18 so and did nice it, Yes. So did it upgrade all by itself, or uh, no, no, was no. there they any part of the, it? They gave the, they gave uh, Azure said that we're going to remove everything, so you need to migrate it. So they have migrated all the VMs. I mean, you need to migrate yourself, and then they removed it. Okay. Yeah. Any questions, guys? So, uh, Sri, there, there will not be any ESX servers used in this like, Azure. No, if they use ESX servers, it's costly for them, right? They need to pay a license for VMware. Why do do why will they do that? <laughs> it's costly for them, right? If they already have the hypervisor, why should they go for Hyper-V? Sorry, uh, ESX. Okay. Yeah, it will be costly and and again the point is you see imagine uh, it is something like uh, uh, Pakistan taking Indian help so they'll feel bad right the ego will get hurt similarly if Microsoft using the uh, Operating system as hypervisor of uh, uh, VMware then it's a it's, it's a problem right for them the reputation is at stake so they don't do that But if you go to AWS right AWS is making an offering for you Okay, uh, normally they are using a Zen server But if you want to want to have a cloud based upon VMware uh, vSphere right you can do that actually, but I didn't seen that with uh, 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 this on Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Azure. Actually, they might get in future, but at least they might already came also. But I didn't notice actually. Okay. Okay. It's a, okay. Even uh, Hyper-V also same like uh, ESX only, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Got it. All right. So next, let's understand uh, understand the regions actually. What, what is what is what are the regions actually? Now. The concept is similar to AWS as well. So for example, if let me show you first in AWS and then I'll come here. So let me log into AWS. Okay, so if I go to EC2 and if you see these are all the regions guys, if I say regions, okay, don't don't think region as a country. So if you see us itself has four regions but there are also government regions also which we're not able to see here but a region is nothing but uh, you can consider that as a city most probably okay so if you, for example if you take us east to one north virginia so it's a state right and uh, they have their data centers uh, in uh, ashburn actually so what will happen simply tell a region is similar to for example take like a bangalore actually in Bangalore, what again I can consider as a region, right? Or Mumbai, if you see, it, it, they consider Mumbai as a region. And what they will do inside the Mumbai region, you will have something called as availability zones. What is availability zone? It is nothing but a simple this data center, guys. It can be one or more this data centers. So, and these data centers will be 
will be at a, at a little bit of distance like one will be somewhere like in uh, north mumbai the other one is in navi mumbai or the or or or, or outside the mumbai or if you take if you take bangalore right they can put one data center in electronic city one will be somewhere in uh, um, elahanka and one will be in maleshwaram so what will happen they will make sure that it will be in the radius of 100 kilometers or in the in the perimeter of 100 to 100 kilometers basically they should be in a circle of 100 kilometers not more than that one but in they should have a decent amount of distance why because if there are any floods riots or some sort of uh, natural calamities or man made calamities so 